I'd like for you to take a moment to turn with me in John chapter 15. John chapter 15, and look at verse 13. Uh, John 15, 13 tells us, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And as we talk about the military, you know, you can read, and I think this is good to do. Now, uh, many of us, again, have family members. Uh, I remember hearing the stories of my uncles. I had an uncle who served in the Air Force, an uncle who served in the Navy, and an uncle who served in the Army. And uh, they would every once in a while tell stories. Uh, I remember one uncle telling a story of a friend of his um, who the Germans actually had come through this one area in World War II. The German army came through and um, they uh, killed a bunch of American uh, men. And so they were, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, taking the stuff off of their bodies. What do you call that? Plundering. They were stealing their rings and their watches, anything that they had on. And uh, one gentleman had his fingers. He was not dead. He was alive but was able just to lay there when they came through as fast as they came through. And they cut his fingers off to take his ring while he was still alive. But they didn't know he was still alive. They just cut his couple guys, one guy, whatever, cut his fingers off, took his ring. And so he carries that. We saw the one gentleman uh, in, in front of the wall of the Vietnam War with, without legs. Some of those physical things we can see, but uh, we may not always understand the emotional, right? We may not always understand what's going on in their minds and their, in, their, in their thought processes because of the things that they've seen and experienced. And so we need to pray for them. We, we need to pray and we need to lift them up. And you can think of, many of you can probably think of heroes. Many of you can probably think of those um, who sacrificed. I, I, you can, and you can read some of these for yourself if you study those heroes of the war. And I'm going to just read a couple to you this morning just so that we can think about those that have sacrificed. But in World War I, there was a guy by the name of Jesse Whitfield. He was a cook on a Navy ship, and on April 17, 1918, another ship had exploded right in the area. There were boxes of smokeless powder. There were boxes of, of gunpowder that were exploding in the different places around, and he jumped into the water to help save the life of another man not regarding his own life and what was happening all of around him. You hear story after story. Uh, Bill Hanlon's dad, Bob Hanlon, served in the military, served on the Navy ships and was in Pearl Harbor, right, during World War II. And uh, Pam, you're, who, who was it in your family? Your uncle served in the military and lost his life in the military. And uh, Nikki Highland, I don't know how many of you know Nikki. Uh, many of you know Nikki, but she's at one of the uh, assisted living homes here in Longmont. And uh, her son was killed in uh, the Vietnam War. Her son was killed in the military, serving in this nation, uh, serving our nation, serving the freedoms of our nation. And so we may need to look around. We may to remember. Some of you uh, know Mike and Rainy Gale. Mike, uh, there you are. Mike standing right back there, serving in the Air Force for or was it 21 years, Mike? 20? 21 years, okay. Mike Gale served in the military 21 years. Doc, and, Doc Stewart served in the military. You saw some of the gentlemen, some of the ladies that stood. Uh, we need to make sure we're keeping these folks in our prayers and keeping these folks in, in mind because even these folks that are with us have had friends that maybe they've lost friends in the military or maybe they've lost loved ones or friends of friends. So it's, it's vital that we think of their sacrifice. I think of a guy by the name of Dory Miller who was the first African-American sailor to receive the Medal of Honor. Uh, as a cook on the Arizona, he manned a machine gun and shot down enemy airplanes when the Japanese were attacking Pearl Harbor. Um, I think of a guy by the name of Daniel Fernandez and he was in the infantry in 1966. Uh, they were called upon to in, the, uh, in the Viet Cong, so they were in the, v in the Vietnam War, and uh, the fighting innumerable uh, uh, 
enemy soldiers that were coming, coming against them and um, continuing to serve and continuing to help his fellow soldiers. And, and, and so some of these guys and gals have been awarded the Purple Heart. They've been awarded the Medal of Honor. They've been awarded. But a lot of times we don't know about these sacrifices and we don't know about their names. So that's why I think it, it takes some time to, uh, or it would be good for us to take time to remember them. Uh, some of you remember Al Slayton, who died recently, died a few years ago, and went on to be with the Lord, and he was shot down behind enemy lines, and it took him 12 days to get back to safety, and he wrote a book, and the interventions of God uh, in his life, that, that God did things to protect him and to keep him out of enemy hands and from becoming a prisoner of war. So when you begin to think of these folks, especially the ones that are around us that we know, and those of you and us that have had family members, and, and we think of their sacrifice, we begin to realize that freedom is not free, is it? Uh, it's easy to take it for granted. It's, it's easy, I, I think, you know, at times when we hear some of the colleges and the students that are on these campuses today and the liberalism and the, and the socialism that's being taught, uh, it's easy to forget the freedom of speech that we have and the things that we have in this nation because of the sacrifice of these men and women. Amen? And uh, so freedom is not free. Um, I'm thinking of Michelle Maine. I don't, Michelle, you are here. There you are. Your sons, both, both of your sons were in the military and, uh, Yale and Rex. Is Rex still in the military or is he out now? Okay. So, you know, you think of these moms and dads whose sons and daughters, uh, go to war and, and go to battle and, and enlist in the military and they're praying and believing God to protect them and, and, uh, uh, surround them with angels and, and, and just minister to them. So w when we begin to realize the people that are around us and we say, freedom is not free, uh, it really isn't. And so as we celebrate this weekend, now, of course, we're celebrating uh, today as well as Memorial Day, we're celebrating communion and we're celebrating what Jesus Christ did in His coming to our lives uh, and doing what he did for us. Uh, you know, we've talked over the last uh, few weeks and we've been talking about faith and David and Goliath and, and uh, David was the first one to fight one of the giants and then as you study scripture, you find out because of his courage and his bravery, his faith in God, uh, it made a way for men under him to fight giants and to kill giants. He, he began to blaze a trail. Uh, and many of these men and women that serve in our military, they've blazed the trail for freedom. They blaze a trail for others. And then we understand that Jesus was the ultimate freedom fighter. We understand that Jesus came uh, to sacrifice and give the ultimate sacrifice for you and for me. His sacrifice was given so that we could have freedom from the devil. Colossians tells us that we were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. He came to set us free. He came to heal. He came to deliver from bondages in the mind. He came to deliver from addiction. He came to de deliver from worry. He came to deliver from fear. He came to deliver us, to give us true freedom, no matter what's happening around us. Isn't that good? Uh, that the believer in Christ, no matter what's happening around them, no matter what happens around us, we can still experience peace because he's the prince of peace, because he came to deliver us. And we needed his sacrifice. Uh, you know, you hear the stories and, and the, the, of the men who see a grenade and they dive on the grenade at the sacrifice of their own life to save others around them. Jesus may have well done the same thing for you and for me. In his coming, that's really what he did. He took the bullet for us. He took the grenade for us. He was nailed to the cross 
of Calvary for you and for me. I want you to turn with me, and I know this is a familiar passage to some, but t- turn with me to the end of the book of Matthew, and let's just take a few moments to look at what Jesus did in his death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, let's take a moment to look at his sacrifice, because he went through this for you and for me, and we're about to celebrate communion today. And, and I want to just encourage you as we get close to taking communion together that you don't have to be uh, a partner at New Creation Church, a regular member of New Creation Church, if you will, or a tender. You need to be a believer in Christ. And that means that you, at some point in your life, open your heart, your life. You pray from deep within and you say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God and that God raised you from the dead for me. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. That simple few-second prayer makes you a child of God, makes you able to come into His presence, makes you a new creation in Christ Jesus, old things having passed away. Behold, all things become new. And so Jesus came. We understand that we would, uh, so that we could experience eternal life. And eternal life, I like to say it this way because sometimes we get the concept or the thought in our mind that eternal life just means living forever. But eternal life is not just the length of life because how many of you know those who don't know Christ are going to live forever too, right? Those who don't know Christ will live forever. They'll live in hell. They'll live separated from God. But for the believer, eternal life means living with God, means living with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, in heaven for all of eternity. That's what eternal life means, yes. But it also has to do with a quality of life now. Eternal life has to do with a quality of life now, with Him living on, Jesus living on the inside, making us overcomers in this world making us the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, bringing us to a place of peace, bringing us to a place of healing, bringing us to a place of provision. That's what part of eternal life is, having to live free from the the control of darkness and the control that the devil would come. We know the scripture in John 10 that says the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that you would have life and have life more abundantly. Wow. So that's what the scripture says. So in Matthew chapter 27, verse 26 says, Pilate released Barabbas to them, and he ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. Then he turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Some of the governor's soldiers, verse 27, took Jesus into their headquarters and called out the entire regiment. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. And they placed a reed stick in his right hand as a scepter. Then they knelt before him in mockery and a taunted him, Hail, King of the Jews. They spit on him. They grabbed the stick and struck him on the head with it. And when they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him again. And then they led him away to be crucified. After they'd nailed him to the cross... Soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing the dice. And and those of you that have studied, maybe you haven't studied yet, many of these things that we just read were prophesied hundreds of years before they actually happened. The Bible talks about the way Jesus would die before the Romans even invented crucifixion. God prophesied. He spoke these things out so that we would understand His heart for mankind. 
So the Bible says that they nailed him to the cross. Soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. And they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened to the cross above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him that read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. So what did Jesus do? He came to bring freedom to us. As the men and women we're honoring today gave their life, families have been adjusted again, maybe uh, and, and had to, you know, sacrifice loved ones to the freedoms that we enjoy, the freedoms that others and other nations enjoy. Jesus came that we would have life and have life more abundantly. Wow. I'd